Hi, in this lecture, let us learn an interesting and important theorem called Gashgorian theorem. Gashgorian theorem can be used to localize eigenvalues of a given matrix. You may be asking, why are we doing this theorem in between our discussion on power method? Well, Gashgorian theorem gives us how the eigenvalues are located in the complex plane that can be used to verify some of the hypotheses of power method. Well, if you recall, power method can be used to compute the dominant eigenvalue and a corresponding eigenvector of a given matrix. Well, this may be viewed as a disadvantage of power method because it cannot compute other eigenvalues of a matrix when applied once, right? It only can capture dominant eigenvalues. In fact, in the next lecture, we will see how to modify the power method to get other eigenvalues also. But the fact is that when applied power method once, we get only one eigenvalue and a corresponding eigenvector. If we are directly applying the power method, then we will get the dominant eigenvalue and a corresponding eigenvector. However, it looks like a disadvantage in many applications. We want only the dominant eigenvalue of a given matrix. One good example is the well-known Google search engine. Google search engine uses page rank algorithm to find the relevance of a site with the keyword given for searching. What Google search engine does is that for each site, it assigns a number called page rank score. Then it arranges all these numbers in the form of a matrix called Google matrix and Google will then compute a vector called page rank vector. The page rank vector is the eigenvector with certain properties of the corresponding dominant eigenvalue of the Google matrix. Therefore, Google does not need all the eigenvalues of the Google matrix. It only wants the dominant eigenvalue of the Google matrix. In that way, power method is highly preferred because the Google matrix in general can be with few billion dimensions. Therefore, if you go for computing all the eigenvalues of the matrix, say for instance, if Google uses QR method which can give all the eigenvalues of the matrix, then it will be very costly computationally. Whereas, power method will specifically capture only the dominant eigenvalue, right? Therefore, power method is computationally very efficient in this case. Therefore, in fact, Google search engine uses power method. Now, we understood the importance of power method. The only disadvantage of the power method is when we want to understand the convergence of the power method, then we have to check certain hypotheses which are not practically possible to check. However, note that these hypotheses are not required if we want to just implement power method because to implement power method, we only need to give an initial guess vector which can be chosen arbitrarily. Right? It is only that when we want to understand the convergence of the power method to the dominant eigenvalue, then we need certain hypothesis. For instance, we need to know that the given matrix has a unique dominant eigenvalue. And also, we need to know that the matrix has a complete set of eigenvectors. That is, a set of eigenvectors should form a basis for Rn when the matrix is an n cross n matrix. Right? Now, the question is, can we somehow sense these hypotheses without explicitly knowing the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors? Well, the answer is maybe possible. In certain cases, we can use the Gashgorian disk to conclude this. Now, I will introduce you to Gashgorian theorem through a couple of examples. 
and then I will state the theorem. Let us first consider this 3 cross 3 matrix. First we have to construct Gashgorian disks. Each Gashgorian disk is associated with a row of the matrix. Therefore, if we are working with a n cross n matrix, then we can construct n Gashgorian disks. How to construct that? Let us take the first row of this matrix. You have to take the diagonal element as the center of the disk and then take the modulus of all the non-diagonal elements of that row and then sum them up and that will be the radius which we will call as row 1 and the center is the diagonal element. In that way the disk 1 which is coming from the first row is given by the set of all z in the complex plane such that mod z plus c is less than or equal to 1. Remember these disks are constructed in the complex plane because we know that a matrix can have complex eigenvalues. In fact, Gashgorian disk theorem can localize the complex eigenvalues also. That is why we construct this disk in the complex plane. For the second disk, we have to take the second row of the matrix, again take the diagonal element as the center of the disk and take the modulus of the non-diagonal elements of that row and sum them up. In this case, it sums to 0.35, right? So, you have to take these two numbers, take their modulus and then sum them. That gives you the radius as 0.35 and the center is 2. Similarly, the disk 3 is given by the set of all z in C such that mod z minus 5, 5 is the center is less than or equal to mod 0.2 plus mod 0.5 that sums to 0.7 which is the radius of the disk 3, right. So, this is the set of Gashgorian disk for the given matrix. Let us visualize this disk. The disk D1 is shown in the yellow color, the disk D2 is shown in blue color and the disk 3 is shown in green color. Now, what the Gashgorian disk theorem says that all the eigenvalues of the matrix A will lie in these disks. In this case, in fact, the Gashgorian disk theorem says that you will have exactly one eigenvalue, let us call it as mu 1 that belongs to this set and another eigenvalue say lambda 2 lies in the disk D 2 and the third eigenvalue say lambda 3 lies in the disk D 3 they can be anywhere in the disk. Suppose if it is here, it means it is a complex eigenvalue. If it lies on the real line, it means it is a real eigenvalue. But what the Gashgorian disk theorem surely says that you cannot find an eigenvalue which is outside the disk. That is not possible. That is what the Gashgorian disk theorem says. This is what we mean by saying that the Gashgorian theorem localizes the eigenvalues. It means it just gives you a particular set in which all the eigenvalues lie. In this case, it is the union of these disks. In fact, let us see what are all the eigenvalues of the matrix A that we have taken. You can see that one eigenvalue is given by minus 2.9591 and so on. You can clearly see that it lies in this disk and the second eigenvalue that we have computed is 4.95 and so on and that you can clearly see that it lies in this disk whereas the third eigenvalue that we have computed is 2.0085 and so on and that lies in this disk. So, this particular matrix respects the Gashgorian disk theorem very well. 
Let us take another example. Here we have a phi cross phi matrix. Again, you have to construct the Gashgorian disks. Since there are 5 rows, we will have 5 Gashgorian disks. Disk D1 is given like this, where the center is minus 3 and the radius is obtained by summing the absolute values of these elements. Similarly, the second disk D2 has center 2 and the radius is obtained by summing 0.25 plus 0.1. Right? The third disk is again the center is at 5 and the radius is 0.7 because you are summing the absolute values of these elements. The disk 4 has center at 3.5 and the radius as the sum of the modulus of these elements that adds to 1.35 and finally, the disk D 5 has center at minus 2 and its radius is 0.5. Again, let us visualize this disk. D 1 is given like this, D 2 is this and D 3 is this disk, D 4 is this and D 5 is this disk. Now, Gashgorian disk theorem also says that you have precisely two eigenvalues in this region. Why 2? Because this is the union of two disks. Therefore, two eigenvalues lie in this set. Similarly, three eigenvalues will lie in this set that is for the Gashgorian disk theorem says that is you can find three eigenvalues lying in this set. Let us now precisely state the Gashgorian disk theorem. You are given a matrix A which is a n cross n matrix first you have to find the Gashgorian disks, each corresponding to a row of the matrix. Therefore, if it is a n cross n matrix, you have n Gashgorian disks, the radius is given like this and the disks are given like this. Now, the conclusion of the theorem is that each eigenvalue of the matrix A lies in one of the disks d k. It means what? You cannot find an eigenvalue lying outside the union of these disks. That is what it means. The theorem also concludes that if you have some m number of disks whose union is disjoint from some n minus m number of disks, then precisely you have m eigenvalues in the first set and the n minus m eigenvalues in the second set. That is precisely what we have visualized here. You have m number of disks whose union is disjoint from n minus m number of disks. Okay. Here the m is equal to 2. Right? So, you have two disks which are intersecting each other and their union is disjoint from another set of disks which consists of three disks here in this particular example. Therefore, you can precisely have m number of eigenvalues in this set. Let us call this as R 1. So, R 1 will have two eigenvalues in this example and this set can have three eigenvalues, let us call this as R 2, that is what the theorem says. Suppose among the disks, there is a collection of m disks whose union is disjoint from the union of the rest of all n minus m disks. We are calling the first set as 
R1 and the second as R2. Then the theorem says that you have exactly m eigenvalues lying in R1 and n minus m eigenvalues lying in R2. Let us prove only the first part of the theorem. Let lambda be an eigenvalue of the matrix A and let V be the corresponding eigenvector that we have chosen. Then you can write A V equal to lambda V, right? That is the definition of the eigenvector. Also note that the eigenvector should be non-zero. Now, let us take the maximum norm of the vector v and that is given by maximum of modulus of v1, v2 and so on up to vn. Let this maximum norm be achieved at the coordinate say r, where r is an integer between 1 to n. Then the rth equation can be written like this, right? Why? Because I am just taking the rth coordinate of this vector to the left hand side and writing this equation. Now, what we will do is we will take this term alone on the right hand side and keep all the other terms on the left hand side and then divide both sides by v r. That is we are taking this to other side that gives us a r r minus lambda into v r and then dividing both sides by v r right and that gives us lambda minus a r r is equal to v 1 by v r a r 1 up to v n by v r a r n right. Now, take the modulus on both sides and use the triangle inequality we get modulus of lambda minus a r is less than or equal to this expression. Now, you see v r is greater than or equal to all the other components v i, i is equal to 1 to n, right. That implies mod v i divided by v r is less than or equal to 1, right. Therefore, each of this quantity is less than or equal to 1. So, you use this property and write this right hand side expression like this, you can see that mod lambda minus a r r is less than or equal to this, where each of this term is dominated by 1 here. Now, if you recall the disk d r is nothing but the set of all z in C such that mod z minus a r r is less than or equal to the radius. The radius of the rth disk is precisely given by this expression, right. So, that is what we want to prove for the first conclusion of the theorem. The theorem says that each eigenvalue of A lies in one of the disks. How we picked up that disk is by first picking up the maximum coordinate of the vector v and then we are trying to pack lambda into that disk dr where the maximum norm is achieved. So, this completes the first part of the proof of Gashgorian theorem. We will not prove the second part. Now, let us see how to use Gashgorian theorem to check the hypothesis of power method. Let us again take our first example where we have taken a 3 cross 3 matrix, right. If you recall, we have also constructed the Gashgorian disks for this matrix. Now, let us see whether we can get some idea about the hypothesis of the power method. Recall that the second hypothesis of the power method demands that A should have a complete set of eigenvectors. That is all the eigenvectors should be linearly independent, right. But by seeing the Gashgorian disk, you can see that one eigenvalue is sitting here, one eigenvalue is sitting here and one eigenvalue is sitting here. Therefore, this matrix has distinct eigenvalues. Therefore, all the eigenvectors are going to be linearly independent, right. 
So, Gaskorian theorem gave us the information that all the eigenvalues of the matrix A are in fact distinct. Now, let us check the first hypothesis where we need to see whether A has a unique dominant eigenvalue. First observe that the dominant eigenvalue is coming from this disk right because this point is 4.3 right and this is 5.7 right the center is 5 therefore assuming that a has real eigenvalues because we always work with real eigenvalues in that way the eigenvalue of A which is coming from this disk is going to be something between 4.3 to 5.7 and that is surely going to be the dominant eigenvalue. Why? Because we have to check this condition lambda 1 should be strictly greater than lambda i for i equal to 1, 2 and so on here it is only 3. right? So, to check that what you have to do is you see whether the disk which is lying on the negative side of the plane when it shifted to the positive side it should not intersect the circle which has the dominant eigenvalue that is the idea. Let us shift this disk to the positive side and see well the disk when you shift to the positive side it is not intersecting the disk D3 right that shows that whatever may be the value that is coming from this part of the interval is surely going to be different from this part as well as this part. Therefore, from here you can in fact conclude that A has a unique dominant eigenvalue right. Let us take the next example where we had a 5 cross 5 matrix and here we have seen that the Gashgorian disks are given like this. You can clearly see that we cannot use Gashgorian disk theorem to check the hypothesis of the power method. Why? Because some of the disks are intersecting. For instance, the dominant eigenvalue is coming from this disk and it is intersecting this disk also. Therefore, it may happen that there is a eigenvalue with algebraic multiplicity as 2 or even 3 and also when you shift this disk to the other side that is when you take modulus of the eigenvalue which is sitting here it may also coincide with the dominant eigenvalue right. So, therefore, Gashgorian this theorem cannot be used to verify the hypothesis of the power method. It does not mean that A is going to violate the hypothesis of the power method. It is only that the Gashgorian theorem cannot be used. Now, what is the idea? Should we give up or is there any other way to check the hypothesis of power method through Gashgorian theorem? Well, there is a nice idea that why not we apply the Gashgorian theorem to A transpose. Why? Because the eigenvalues of A and the eigenvalues of A transpose are one and the same. Therefore, we can also apply the Gashgorian theorem to A transpose and see if that gives us a good information. If so, then that can be borrowed to conclude how the eigenvalues are going to be located for the matrix A itself. right? So, in this case what we have to do instead of taking the radius along the rows you have to now take the radius along the columns that is take the absolute values of the non diagonal elements of the columns. Let us see in that way how the Gashgorian disk for A transpose are looking like you can see that the disk D1 is given like this. Again, you can observe that the centers of these disks are not going to change, only the radii will change. For the first disk, now you have to sum 
along the columns right. In the previous case we took the sum along the row and therefore, we had the sum as 1 for the radius of the first disk. Now, the first disk will have radius 0.55 only right. So, that is the advantage in this particular example it may be that A transpose may give a bad information than A sometimes, but in this case A transpose is seems to be giving a better information than A. Similarly, for D 2 again you have to take the diagonal element 2 as the center of D 2 and then now the radius is computed along the column elements. In that way we got 1.3 for the disc 2 and similarly disc 3 has radius 0.55 again and the center is at 5 and similarly the other two disks. Let us see how they look like in the complex plane. You can see now that all the disks for A transpose are disjoint. Therefore, you can have the hypothesis of power method verified from the Gashgorian theorem applied to A transpose. You can in fact shift these two disks to the positive side and see whether they are intersecting the disk from where you get the dominant eigenvalue. Note that the dominant eigenvalue is coming from this disk right. Let us see how they look like when I shifted these two disks from the negative side to positive side why we are doing because the dominant eigenvalue condition is checked with modulus of the eigenvalues right it goes like this. So, therefore, we have to check whether the absolute value of the eigenvalues are going to coincide with the dominant eigenvalue. That is why we are shifting this disk to the positive side and now you can see that even when you shift them to positive side they do not intersect the disk from where you get the dominant eigenvalue. Therefore, the Grashgorian theorem applied to A transpose gives us a good information and it tells us that the power method is going to converge. If at all you choose your x naught correctly, again that is not a problem because what you need is that you have to choose your x naught such that C 1 should not be equal to 0. If you recall, C 1 should not be equal to 0. What is C 1? C 1 is nothing but the coefficient of the first term in the representation C 1 V 1 plus up to C n V n right. This is not something very serious because we may choose 2 or 3 vectors and run the power method. If all these are going to converge to the same eigenvalue then it is very likely that that is going to be dominant eigenvalue because it is very unlikely that you will choose x naught 3 times for which all the 3 vectors will have 0 c 1 right. So, that may be very unlikely. In that way this is practically not very serious hypothesis whereas, the other two are really serious concern to check and Gashgorian theorem gives us a possibility that we may verify those hypotheses without having explicitly the idea about how the eigenvalues are. Let us also state the Gashgorian theorem on A transpose. So, there is nothing new here you just have to apply the radius column wise now that is the only difference in this theorem when compared to the theorem that we have stated previously otherwise the conclusion remains the same. Well, before ending this lecture let us have another interesting application of the Gashgorian this theorem. If you recall in the last class we have studied the convergence theorem for iterative methods in particular for Jacobi and Gauss-Seidel method. 
we had given a necessary and sufficient condition for the convergence. What is that? That is using the spectral radius of the iterative matrix B. That is the spectral radius of the iterative matrix should be less than 1. This is the necessary and the sufficient condition for the convergence of an iterative method. Right? What is spectral radius? Well, if you recall the definition of spectral radius is nothing but the maximum over all the eigenvalues lambda i. Right? In a way, you can see that the spectral radius is nothing but the dominant eigenvalue of the matrix B. Therefore, you can in fact compute the spectral radius using power method. If your purpose is to only see whether the Jacobian method or the gauss seidel method is going to converge or any iterative method is going to converge or not, then even you can go for checking the Gashgorian theorem. How you will do? For instance, let us take the Jacobi method. The iterative matrix for the Jacobi method is given like this. You can see that all the Gashgorian disks of this matrix are having their centers as zeros. In fact, Jacobi method for any system will have the diagonal elements as zero. You can verify that. In this case, what you have to do is you either go row wise and get the disks or also you go by column wise and see the disks whether all the disks are having their radii as something less than 1. If that is something less than 1, it means what? All the eigenvalues are going to lie in this disk. right? And if you know that the largest disk has its radii something less than 1, it means the spectral radius which is the dominant eigenvalue will in the worst case be sitting somewhere here and that will be strictly less than 1. Right? So, that is the idea. Let us see how the Gashgorian disk is placed for the matrix B j. You can see that the last disk has radius more than 1. Therefore, you cannot conclude the convergence of Jacobi method using the Gashgorian disk applied on B j. Let us see whether we can conclude the convergence by applying Gashgorian disk on B j transpose. Well, you can see that when you take the disks with B j transpose, the radius of the first disk is the sum of these two numbers which amounts to be around 0.757 and the second disk as the radius something very near to 0.9, but still it is less than 1. And the third disk is pretty small, its radius is only around 0.4. Therefore, the Gashgorian theorem when applied to B j transpose tells us that the Jacobi method is surely going to converge. In fact, you can use the power method to compute the spectral radius also. In this case, the spectral radius of B j is 0.63825 and so on. Well, the convergence may be little slow, but still the Jacobi method converges. Without going to the explicit calculation of the Jacobi iteration, we can understand either by using power method or more easily using the Gashgorian disk theorem, we can conclude this. Let us go to see whether the same exercise can be done for gauss seidel method. Well, in the gauss seidel method, the Gashgorian disks for the iteration matrix B g is given like this. And you can see whether you take row wise and apply the Gashgorian disk theorem or you take the disks column wise, you can see that all the disks have radius something very less than one. Right? In fact, you can see that the spectral radius of the iterative matrix of the gauss seidel method is very, very small. 
that in fact shows that the Gauss Seidel method in fact is going to converge very fast to the solution of this system. With this note, let us end this lecture. Thank you for your attention.